In this video, I'm going to go over some basic information on growing zucchini and squash plants. These ones are in containers and most of this information can also be applied to growing like in rows as well. So if you're growing your plants in containers or you just want some more information on how to grow squash, you've come to the right video. Let's get started. Squash plants need to be pollinated. They're not self pollinators. So that means that they have a female flower and a male flower. I will show you the difference between those because they are definitely different looking. The female flower looks a little bit like lumpier and the male flower is a little bit more straight. So I'll show those differences, but basically the female flower needs to be pollinated by the male flower. The male flower is basically coming just from like a stem where the female flower has the fruit on it. The female is what needs to be pollinated to create that fruit for you to harvest. If you're noticing that you have a lot of female flowers on an early plant and no male flower yet then the male flowers are probably short to come after that sometimes they don't always show up at the same time and if the female flower has bloomed and it's been a few days and it doesn't get pollinated by a male flower what's gonna happen is that the end of it is going to turn brown and the flower is just going to die off and the actual fruit is just going to turn brown and die off so if they're not pollinated by a bee or any other type of a pollinator or hand pollinated then the fruit will not reproduce. This is what a successfully pollinated female flower looks like. The reason I know this has been successfully pollinated is because the top part is closed, as you see, and if it was not pollinated yet, it would still be open because it's the morning time. So this is closed, it's been pollinated, and now the fruit is going to begin to grow. A few things to look for when you're growing the zucchini and squash plants is a nice green color. If your plant is starting to lose that color and it's getting yellowish, it might have a chlorosis problem. And that simply just means that it's lacking nutrients. I will include a link to how to revive plants in this video so that you can see how to revive those sick plants or just include more nutrients to those plants. With the zucchini plants you definitely want to make sure that they don't dry out. There's a lot of water content in these plants and you really want to make sure that you're reviewing the plants often for little tiny eggs on them. So if you see any type of like little eggs, it's best to blow off those eggs with like a hose or just smush them. You don't want very, there's so many different pests that want to, you know, start munching on these plants. Uh, squash bugs as well are literally the worst. So I'll go into like a whole video on that, but definitely just making sure that these plants aren't being attacked and getting ahead of any type of infestation. Powdery mildew is definitely a culprit in injuring these plants as well. When I water these plants, I like to water them at the base. I try to keep moisture off of these as best as possible. So especially at night, you do not want moisture just sitting on these leaves. Otherwise, they will start to get fungus like the powdery mildew on them. So try to keep the leaves as dry as possible when you're watering them unless it's like high noon and you know that the sun is going to dry out the leaves again. These squash flowers are actually edible so you can throw them on top of salads or fry them, add them as a garnish on top of a nice pasta dish so definitely keep that in mind. In the event that you don't have a lot of pollinators like bees or your um, zucchinis or squash are in a greenhouse I will show you how to self pollinate them. It's really really easy. You just grab basically the male flower and basically touch it on the female flower. Pruning your squash and zucchini plants. When you're growing in containers, you're gonna try to keep that plant as compact as possible. These are larger plants. So if you're noticing that the bottom leaves are browning or yellowing, definitely cut them at the base as close to the stem as possible. Make sure you don't injure the stem 
but we don't need those leaves there anymore and we want to try to con condense that plant so that it saves energy and that it also saves space. A really important tip about growing in containers is make sure that you're fertilizing often. I'm using the Job's Organic Fertilizer as well as worm castings in these pots to give them continuous nutrients. Think about it like this, these plants don't have access to the real ground. Their roots are contained, so they need you to feed them as much nutrients as they require to produce the fruit that you need. Harvesting. When it comes to harvesting these squash plants, after they are pollinated and that flower kind of closes up, it really is just a matter of about three or four days until they are ready to pick. A young squash is going to be more tender and you can of course allow them to grow a little bit larger if you want them to be hardier for like grilling for example. This is one of my heirloom long white zucchinis. I can't wait to try this and see how it tastes in comparison to your normal dark zucchini. I hope that this video about zucchini plants and growing them helped you. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a like and also hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.